Hey guys, I spent over 1800 hours building in Minecraft to recreate a game. In this project, I started with making the map of Yarnum, and then we got into creating a mod, and we also delved into creating our own cinematic films, which is insane. And today, I'm finally finishing the whole map of Yarnum. Hey, if you want to come visit this massive gothic city, you can. Everything including this world is available for download on my Patreon. This provides me a way to give additional content to you for supporting me. I also want to note that this project is designed for version 1.8. 18.2. And if you want to download the mod and play on this map, everything will be down in the description waiting for ya. Hey, uh, one last thing. If you want to help level up my content, support my channel. It's free and it will make me happy. Okay, with that said, it's now time to finish the labyrinthian gothic city of Bloodborne. So, last time, I left off by building Central Yarnum. And that was uh, great. After some adding some elements, I then duplicate the bridge. Yeah, but today I'm gonna make everything better and complete the whole city. So first, when I got into building, I began working on Tomb of Odin, which wasn't done yet. So I started by making the wide staircase. To quickly compare with the original game, it looks like this. Anyways, after that, by using a lovely custom block model, I made a bridge. But I quickly noticed that this one was really tricky to do. Not only did I have to make the bridges slightly bent, but I also needed to make the entire area not too big or too small to fit the humongous. 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 Bridges in. They had to be perfect, or else the entire map will make my life harder. But luckily, we have one thing that will solve all my problems. Wish it did. So here's the thing. There's the all mighty map viewing editor thingy, which is this. Which is essentially the entire map of Bloodborne. This provides precise dimensions that make it much more convenient for me to use as a reference. Reference when building in Minecraft compared to using this. I use this. This is insanity. Because we can just hop on, pick a building, and study them without getting hit. Like the smart people we are. But there's one teeny tiny downside. Shaders aren't a thing. However, with the help from Stagvent and Lance, I was able to get the free camp working on Bloodborne. And that's going to be helping a lot. But of course, there's another downside. Which is whenever a player is standing hey on guys, a certain section of the map, the areas that are visible from the player's view will not render. Why? Well, to keep good performance, I don't know its place. I just want to be able to roam around the whole map without fighting and possibly dying from enemies, and mostly just staring at this loading screen. So, I use this. Must hunt. In debug mode, we can do this. It's just called Debug Dash. Not only is the animation speed nuts, but also allows me to move vertically in any direction. We can also use no clip to pass through walls, ignoring collisions. And since I'm fast and strong, I can defeat these guys easily. You die. Failure! We now have all tools that'll make life convenient. And with that in hand, all I need to do is keep working. Let us get on back, shall we? So, every time I build and place a structure, I double check by comparing with the actual game and the editor to see if I didn't mess up. And everything went right. I finished Tomb of Odin, which meant Central Yarnum was done. But before I was about to work on Cathedral Ward, I noticed something which became a huge problem. What you see in the map of Yarnum and Cathedral Ward are completely different maps. But you wonder, why would that be a problem? Well, from Tomb of Odin, up above, you can see a chapel at the edge of the bridge. Yeah, that's from Yarnum's map view. I want you to remember that real good because when you look down from Cathedral Ward's map, you'll see that the supposed open area is now enclosed by a cylinder foundation. This means the Tomb of Odin's sky view from Yarnum's point of view will be gone. There's also a broken bridge that's merged with the foundation below, blocking off the path to Tomb of Odin. And recreating that will change the map entirely. And that's a problem. We will get into that in the Cathedral Ward code. So, the problem here is there are two separate maps combined into one. And we don't want the map to look like this. Right. 
right? So I've been trying everything to tackle these problems. Stretching the foundations, adjusting the map, but nothing seemed to work. My goal for Cathedral Ward is to recreate the map entirely, but I was struggling from the start. But then it hit me. Instead of ramming myself against a problem, what if I simply just did something else? So I set aside the problem and focused on building what I originally wanted, which were those alleys in Cathedral Ward. Here, I got to work by placing and refining building. Connecting bridges to structures creating this narrow passageway. While also expanding the foundation to create space. Okay, let's get into something interesting. I'm not just building the map, I'm developing a mod. A Bloodborne mod. And let's get into that. Diving into modeling first. So, we've made a ton of characters. Well, more accurately, all from Central Yarnum in Cathedral Ward. And our focal point was to recreate its features almost exactly. Why? Well, because it feels good. I don't Ranging from small characters to larger ones, we finished a total of 31 models. And we still have a couple more to go, and you better be excited for what's coming next. That's into animations. Using Dark Souls Anim Studio as a direct source of visual reference, we recreated the movements which make the characters feel strong and nice. So far we've made over 140 full anim- You're wrong potomy you f It's 1.35. We prepared. Also if you happen to be an animator and want to help our project, throw me a DM. And with that, let's get back to building. So, I first focused on establishing the map's layout, using it as a guiding outline. I then went through placing buildings, detailing foundations, and building a gate. Following that, I noticed that we needed a cemetery, but I didn't make any tombstones. So, I got into 3D modeling. I dedicated over two hours making four types of tombstones, and kept my focus on creating this rough feeling texture and carefully designed the rest. I then built and placed the objects, and boom, it's done. After that, I briefly delved into the making of the clock tower, starting with the details of the building itself before proceeding to work on the surrounding walls. I then made other stuff, but we'll get into those later. We'll be safe here. The incense wards off the beasts. Spread the word. Tell them to come on over. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> it's now time to build Uden Chapel. Here, I just started building. My focus here was to use the custom block models I made to create buttresses and pinnacles and also make it as good as the original. But after finishing the exterior, I didn't stop there. I was determined to decorate the interior too. I went all out by designing a complete tile pattern, which took way too long to make, made and placed candles, temporarily finishing the interior. Moving forward, after that, this is where I challenged myself to create a visually diagonal building using custom blocks. And with some effort, I got it to work. It looks weird, but it's it's nice. After that, I worked on this, made the cylindrical foundation where this is, and decorated with buildings. This area leads to this structure where it connects to old Yarnum, but we'll get into that soon. To kind of finish off this area, I added my own taste by making bended staircases and shoved buildings in between. And with that, we now have Cathedral Ward mostly there. All I have to do is first build the Healing Church, Old Yarnum Church, and Upper Cathedral Ward. Then finish off Odin Chapel, the Clock Tower, and Cathedral Ward itself. But with everything going smoothly, this happened. Basically what happened is that I... I clicked on this. Very stupid. Fortunately, only Cathedral Ward was damaged, and not Yarnum. Still, missing chunks were everywhere, and I decided to feel sadness. I'm sad. But luckily, I had a backup. I was only able to restore 80% of the damage, but I was more than happy. Thanks, past. But then I noticed something. The map didn't feel enough. It felt to Minecraft. So, after spending some time in game and ESM, I noticed the streets had bricks sticking out. So, I made them. And also I made bags, wooden bags, and even built a fountain using note blocks. I also created a well, made new variations of tombstones, and also decorated outside of Yosefka's clinic with superb three-dimensional models. <laughs> a 
It's now time to build a healing church workshop. First, I want to capture the perfect size of the structure before doing shit. So after expanding this part, I gradually worked on details and placed this tower. I then proceeded by expanding this platform for the second floor, placing pilasters and making a curved ceiling. I then made a floating bridge leading directly to the healing church. Along that, I made an octagonal wall, stacked it and shoved it. I then finished off the building by adding a crown of pinnacles and a large spire at the center. After that, I did some more building by adding windows, splitting the structure, and making a spire. Also, since the healing church is directly linked to the upper cathedral ward, I made a diagonal bridge, establishing the main foundation alongside building the entrance to upper cathedral ward. With that mostly done, I wanted to finish off the open areas I missed in the city, so I went through the whole map. Fixed the diagonal buildings along with adding elevated levels by incorporating cylinder foundations with structures on them. I then finished by making this area, which leads to the Forbidden Woods. And now with those out of the window, the map is almost there. Man, that was a... That was a lot, but it doesn't stop there. Because not only we are working on the map and mod, but we're also making this. We focused on creating scenes that resonated with my ideas I had. Ever since the project started, I wanted to make a cinematic film. And we did it! Starting with the short film featuring the battle between the hunter and the cleric beast. We are also working on more, so don't forget to turn on your notifications! We modeled diverse environments and objects. Tommy and I made the storyboard, and Ken polished and rendered the scenes. And there's so many things we need to get into, so I'll make a separate video in the future. That said, let's roll towards programming. So far we've made 10 mobs with some basic AI in Forge, and also cool animations and sound effects. But the development process is kinda sh** right now, so we've decided to make a debug editor on Fabric, which is kind of a Unity version of Minecraft. Basically, the idea is to create a system where we can make mods to this engine in real time and have full control over this game. It'll take a while to finish, but we already made a GLTF OBJ model importer where we can create models in Blender or Blockbench and add them in game. Bardo is currently working on this alone and it'll take a while to finish, so if you're a Java programmer and want to help, throw me a DM and let's do this! Send them straight to Yosefka's clinic so I can. You can assure them. There's no place safer. Let's get into the making of interiors. So to start off, I open up Dark Souls Map Studio and begin searching for what we need to make the interiors. Here I wanted stuff like this, this, and this, so I quickly made them. I also made these, but even though I made larger and complex models, I wouldn't be able to add them in game because Minecraft limitations. So we're just going to add them as entities in the mod for now. We can move them up, down, in all directions. Also rotate and delete. We can still use it, but not for fabric. So instead, we can use the smaller models. And using that, I temporarily finished the clinics for the interior, texturing the floor, walls, and ceiling. It's not done yet, but done for now. Precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me Alfred. And it's now time to build this chapel. Here, my main focal point is to make big window, make second floor, make cool model, and make it good. So I started by making the large window and proceeded to redesign the Odin Chapel interior, decorating and adding statues <laughs> along making a second floor which connects to the outdoor stairs. After that, I connected the structure and added buttresses, and finished off the chapel with small windows creating the heavy feeling I wanted. After that, I added more buildings surrounding the place, made a wall wrapping around the whole chapel, and modeled diagonal balustrades, which I love the most so far in this map. It's the ATFL. I've also made the area where Alfred prays. And it looks nice! Hey. Let's dive deeper into the final area, where I added the most crucial features, completing the clock tower, and finishing the whole map. 
A little bit of lore, Upper Cathedral Ward was once held by the choir, the highest ranking members of the Healing Church, but everything has gone to sh and I'm going to build that. So first, I revisited the Grand Cathedral and began placing structures and working on terraforming. I then shifted my focus to Upper Cathedral Ward, first constructing the foundation as a cylindrical shape, and then extending it to the bottom. After that, I made the walls, roof, and loggia. I then made a bridge attaching to the building, which leads to the Lumen Flowers Garden thingy. I don't know what that place is, but it is. With that, we now have the upper ward finished. Not yet. We're almost done with the whole map, and we just need to finish the final area, which is... Welcome to the Grand Cathedral, where we worship the outer gods and do blood rituals. Here, I started by making the bridge connecting to the back clock tower. I then made stairs connecting to the floor and proceeded to make the pillars, forming this grand arcade. With that done, to finish the grand cathedral, I just, I just did it. I got into the juicy part of the structure by constructing the exterior of the cathedral, recreating the huge windows and weirdly shaped buttresses. I made them look good and finished the interior too. The food is just gone. I don't know what happened, but it just, it's, it's gone. Also, I wanted to make the backside clock tower, but there was a problem. What will happen is that, see, I place it. Yeah, there's our clock tower. Whoop. Yeah, we can't do shit. We can't do shit. It won't work. Yeah, because that's a block height limit. We can't place anything up here. Welcome to Minecraft. Oh my god, it's Minecraft. Yeah, so that's not going to work. Gay Bowser. Yeah, that sucks. But I have a future solution, which is this. You remember that editor I was talking about earlier? Yeah. After I model the clock tower in Blender or whatever, I'm going to use it and place it like this. And it work. Well, good. It's fine, so let's move on. As a final touch, I did some terraforming, adding trees and foliage, decorated the interior of the Tomb of Odin, and expanded the path to Yahagul, the unseen village. Now, with everything done, we now have Bloodborne in Minecraft. What you saw here is a work in progress, but if you can't wait and want more, go check out this video. Anyways, video's done. Thanks for watching.